My next guest here on the show, first guest on the show, the host of NFL Total Access on NFL Network, my friend, my colleague, MJ Acosta Ruiz. Uh, we are m one month away from the NFL regular season kicking off September 8th, MJ. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Steve, I'm your first guest. I am honored. <laughs> yes. This is awesome. <laughs> uh, it, it's awesome to have you, MJ. And by the way, it, it looked like you had an amazing weekend. Uh, you had some oh, friends. Yeah. And MJ rolls with, like, the coolest crowd oh. of, of, <laughs> of broadcasters. They're, they're all A-listers. Yeah. Uh, they all support each other. It, it's a cool group. What, what was the best thing you did this weekend? Um, honestly, it was sort of throwing on these matching sweatshirts um, that we all got for the weekend and, and just hanging out by the couch. Like, my my best friends and I um, have been best friends for over a decade, and all of us are in the business in one capacity or another, either sports or production or news. Um, and it's very rare to find a group of women who wholeheartedly support you, elevate you, keep you accountable, um, and are just genuinely happy for your success as they reach their goals as well. Uh, and it's, it's they really are some of the, the most wonderful human beings on the planet. So I'm very proud um, to call them my, my sisters, really. That, that's awesome, MJ. Uh, I, I saw the note that you, that you gave to them when they came to your house. The, the people make the place. And uh, mm -hmm. it, yeah. it, 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 that's, it couldn't be truer words spoken. And, and speaking of the people make the place, you're one of the people that, that make the place at, at NFL Network. And before we get to the NFL, I do want to talk about you a little bit uh, because you're, you're so inspiring to me, to, to young boys and girls growing up. I mean, the first Afro-Latina to host a show on NFL Network, really important to see. Billie Jean King always said you got to see it to be it. Uh, you, you weren't mm -hmm. able to see it and you were still it. So uh, what was your path to get there? Thank you, Steve. Um, you know, it's been, a, as you know, in this industry, it, it turned it tends to weave and there's ebbs and flows all over the place, but it's been, I don't know, almost 15 years since I started this journey. I started in Miami broadcasting in Spanish for high school and youth sports. So calling high school baseball games and going out to Pop Warner games on Saturdays, you know, um, in 117 degree weather, it felt like in the middle of Miami gardens or, you know, Overtown in South Florida. Um, and I, I loved every moment of that just as much as I love every moment of covering the NFL now um, at the NFL Network. So the trajectory has been long and, and pretty vast. Um, I covered everything from traffic to weather to entertainment, lifestyle, you name it. But sports was always the, the main goal, right? It was what I was most passionate about and what I decided ultimately to focus my entire career on. Um, and so to have made it all the way now to – the NFL Network, and to be able to broadcast in English and in Spanish throughout the league um, has been really wonderful. Yeah, every, everybody has a different journey, and, and, it, and it's so cool to see yours ending up where you are right now. Uh, and there, there's much more to come, I'm sure, MJ. But do, do you ever take a moment to sit back and kind of uh, appreciate what you've achieved? A lot of times it's that day-to-day, -day, we're in the grind. I know you're on TA today, two hours to prep for, but do you get those moments to kind of sit back and, and, and appreciate all that you've accomplished? I do. I do. I mean, listen, on the daily, on the grind, it, it gets you sometimes, man. You know that, Steve. Like, it doesn't stop, and the schedule is so crazy and erratic sometimes. But um, I make it a point at least a few times a week to sit down and sort of reflect on what's happened, what I can do better, and the moments that really sort of made me say, wow, I get paid to do this for a living every single day. And this is what I've worked for and what I've prayed for for so long. So it, it's important to sort of check yourself when you start to spiral down <laughs> that deep, dark hole when the schedule just gets really nuts, which for us, of course, at the network, you know, starts end of July. Like the season doesn't start in September for us. We start in training camp. So it's, a, it's sort of an abrupt start in the middle of the summer. And we're like, oh, crap, we're in and out. Um, but it is unbelievably fulfilling every single day. Yeah, we saw a photo of you with the commissioner, Roger Goodell, right in front of SoFi Stadium. I feel like with our new studios and, you know, being able to be so close to SoFi, there's there's so many times where I'll, I'll just be in a studio, you know, during a break and, and just look around and be like, this is amazing, you know, and, and just right. grateful for for all that, 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 you know, we've been able to do in our careers. Eight new members into the, the Pro Football Hall of Fame this weekend. Uh, what what stood out to you most uh, about the Hall of Fame ceremony this weekend? You know, I have a re obviously these are Hall of Famers for a reason, right? So every year it's tough to pick. And I ask the analysts this on our show every day. 
uh, on purpose because I know it's hard for them to choose just one person uh, who you're most excited about. I have a real soft spot for Coach Victor Meal. Um, I think he's just so he's just so humble and so kind to people. And I remember when they came the night that they were announced as the hall of fame class for this year after NFL honors, they came straight over to the Soul Access studio to your point, right? We're so close to everything. Yep. Um, and I, I just told coach on a sidebar, like on the side of the stage, like, Hey, by the way, coach, I love your tasting room up in Napa. If you guys have not tasted or tried it for meals wine, I highly recommend it. And he, he stopped, in his tracks he's like oh my gosh here's my card next time you go up there please we'll take care of it. and i was so not i'm like no coach like i literally already have a case of your wine in my house like i bought it it's fine i just want to let you know that i really enjoy it and the history that you have within the tasting room he has a replica of the lombardi and like all of this Rams memorabilia but he could not like he told me thank you so much for going to visit it like i did him a favor i was like coach stop it right now um so he's it, it's just so cool to see people like that what they accomplished within the league and within the game and to have their ultimate recognition and to have watched his hall of fame speech did i cry i can neither confirm or deny <laughs> but um i was very excited to see him see him get the gold jacket dick for meal wines all right uh I, i'm gonna yeah, have to i'm gonna have to buy some of that i, I did yeah. not know but i would also never turn down so free right. alcohol so i think oh, you well, should have taken him up on that no, I, I definitely did. Okay. But I just wanted to let him know, like, I'm not asking you so you can send me a bottle of wine. <laughs> That's you know? amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, in addition to hosting NFL Total Access, you also get to do some reporting. That's where you kind of started at NFL Network. You were able to go yeah. up uh, to Raiders training camp recently. Uh, they were our first preseason game. We, we saw the Raiders Hall of Fame game on uh, Thursday of last week. They won. Josh Jacobs played. Derek Carr. Devonte Adams, they did not, as mm -hmm. as you would yeah. expect. We did not expect Josh Jacobs to play. Uh, what did you learn most about the team when you were watching practice up there? Um, this, first of all, this team is having way too much fun. I find, <laughs> which I don't think is a thing, honestly. But they that practice that I watched on on Back Together Saturday at the Raiders facility, they just looked like a bunch of very large kids having a good time out on the field. Like they, I felt like they were clicking. I felt like everything was in rhythm. Um, Devontae Adams at that practice, I've never seen someone float through routes the way that he does. It's inexplicable. He's just built differently. He's a different caliber of wide receiver in this league. I got to talk to him briefly. Um, I got to talk to Max Crosby, which by the way, the evolution of Max Crosby is one of my favorite things to watch across the National Football League. I watched him there. I was still covering the Raiders in the Bay Area um, back in 2018 when he was drafted, I believe, in the fourth round, so later, a later round um, draft pick. And what he's done for this defense, how he comes off the edge and just the spirit of who he is. He was the last person off that field on Saturday at that practice, an extra practice for them because they started early, of course, having the Hall of Fame game on deck for them. Um, and he was still out there getting work in. Um, so I'm even more curious to see how he's going to elevate his game this year, given everything he's already done um, for that for that Raiders season. I, I love to hear that. I love to hear that they're having fun because that's I mean, we yeah. hear from Niners camp that, that they're fighting. So, uh, you know, the, the, the Raiders yeah. are having fun with each other. I, I think that yeah. leads to chemistry and, and could lead to really big things for them this year. Uh, you also got to interview Raiders president Sandra Douglas yeah. Morgan, first black woman to hold that role in the National Football League, Sandra Douglas Morgan. What did that mean to you? Uh, she, first of all, let me just tell you this, Steve. The, my first encounter with her, I, re I personally requested for us to do this interview. It was very important to me to get to meet her and to tell her um, how huge her role and her appointment to being Raiders president was. But of course, because this is a I go into the bathroom at the Raiders facility and Sandra's in there, like just touching up, <laughs> finishing up, like before I interview. I was like, of course, this is the first time I meet her is in the bathroom of the Raiders facility. But it was also like the most organic way. She immediately looked over and was like, oh, my God, MJ. And like gave me this big hug. And I was like, oh, she already knows who I am. Like it was it was a really, really cool, cool moment. Like it felt like there was an unspoken among black women. And I have to say this, there's an unspoken pride right that we feel when we see each other elevate and that our work pays off and so i told her this i you couldn't tell me one single thing the day that she was appointed because i felt like it was me right like i was like you love to see it that, yes girl like do it for all of us and she is and but that's also a very heavy burden to have to bear 
one that, you know, most black women do carry. But she said it in our interview. You have to have broad shoulders to be able to do what we do at the level in which we do it. Um, and she I was already impressed with her. By the way, if you want to join the Sandra Douglas Morgan fan club, just send me an email. I'll send you out a T-shirt. I'm the president of the fan club. It's going to happen. She's phenomenal. Um, and I think it, it speaks to the culture that they're that they're building in, in Las Vegas as well around this Raiders team. And she also said how proud she was of you. And I think that speaks to, you know, what, what you're able to do and what you are doing right now in our industry. And, and one thing, MJ, that I really admire about you is how you speak out on issues that you're passionate about. And you do it in a way that is both thoughtful and extremely powerful. And these days there are plenty of issues. You could do this every single day on Total Access. Right. I don't know that they would allow you to do that. But how do you determine which ones you're going to put on NFL Network that mean the most to you? Well, I think it's important that when there is something that's impacting, especially marginalized communities, that we use the platform and that we amplify what needs to be amplified and hold people accountable that needs to be held accountable. Um, and it's tough, though, sometimes. You know, I started hosting the show in 2020 when we were in the middle of everything of everything, of a racial reckoning, of just social injustice, of so many things. And so I found myself constantly having to have these conversations. And they were really draining and really exhausting and really heavy um, to have to do. But at the same time, I know the responsibility that I carry um, in being the host of this show on a national platform um, and being a person who is deeply and personally affected by these things as well. Um, so I also bring that same energy to other communities who are suffering as well. Um, and so while it's a lot, it's also, I think, a privilege to be able to do so. Um, and so I do take it very seriously. No, it's amazing. It, it's inspiring. I, you know, when I watch those segments, um, like I said, it, they're, they're extremely powerful. They're thoughtful. Um, and and you, you use your words in such a beautiful way. So I, I look up to you in, in that respect. I think that's really hard to do in the position that we're in on, on a national network. Obviously, on social media, there's a lot of folks that are going to be on the opposite side of whatever you say. Even right. if you literally said the sky is blue, somebody's going to be, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when right. you tackle those issues, um, you know, you're, you're putting that upon yourself. And, and I, I think it's, you know, next level what, what you're able to do. Back, back on a lighter note, though, with the Raiders, the AFC West, I'm curious uh, oh. because I, I love that, that division right now and, and the quarterbacks mm -hmm. in that division. How do you think, you know, Raiders, Chargers, Chiefs, Broncos – they all have amazing quarterbacks, Derek Carr, Justin Herbert, Patrick mm -hmm. Mahomes, Russell Wilson. Uh, how do you see the quarterbacks playing for those teams? How do you see that division kind of yeah. shaking out? I don't think we're talking about Justin Herbert and the Chargers enough, to be honest with you. Um, I think they've been sort of like, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way, in sort of like the little brother in that division for so long, right? Like talented, great drafting, have very talented players on there, but can't seem to close out the season. Um, and I just think that this is the year they added Khalil Mack. They did so many other things. Justin Herbert is only getting stronger and better and more accurate. And we already saw what he did flying out the gate right when he came into the league. I think the Chargers cannot and should not be discounted in the AFC West. It's going to be highly competitive. Um, I do think like teams like the Broncos are going to take a minute to get into that flow, but once they do, I mean, I'm, I'm, I just have my popcorn ready, to be honest with you, because that entire division has turned not only that whole conference on its head, but the whole league. Like, if you're in the AFC, the road to the Super Bowl is exponentially more difficult for you. Absolutely. So and, you know, like I, I don't know who you think is the best quarterback out of that group. It's tough mm -hmm. to rank them. And as, it's tough. as blasphemous as it sounds, I have Russell Wilson fourth out of those what? four quarterbacks. I have him fourth. I have Patrick Mahomes. I have Justin yeah. Herbert. I, I think he's underrated, and I, and I think he's legit. And and yeah. I then I have Derek Carr, and then I have Russell yeah. Wilson. You know what? That's I. It's, you know I don't disagree. <laughs> like it's hard, man. It's hard. and the thing is that ranking is going to shift depending because listen, a team goes as its quarterback goes. We know that. That's just how the league works. It's a quarterback driven league. So that ranking will shift as the season unfolds, and that's fine. This is a fluid journey, folks. Like, everyone just has to buckle up and settle in 
and we got to see how this thing shakes out. Because I guarantee you, whatever we think is going to happen is not going to happen. It's going to be the opposite of that. It's, it's going to throw us for a ride for sure. Uh, one thing you're probably going to talk about on TA later today, Ian Rappaport, Mike Garofolo, saying that Baker Mayfield has the inside mm-hmm. edge on the starting job in Carolina over Sam Darnold. Can Baker Mayfield, yes. in your opinion, lead the Carolina Panthers to the playoffs this year? I mean, I think if he's angry enough, he certainly could. <laughs> he's gonna have, he doesn't need much of a chip, right? Like, uh, the man came into the league with a chip already, and now going over there, you know, you start the season against your former team with all the drama that he left behind in Cleveland. Um, but honestly, I think it's going to come down to his attitude, right? Like, it, it's not just about him. He has to lead, which was the word that you used, and galvanize this team to really do in some in Carolina. You know what I mean? So it's not just going to come together because he wants it to. He has to be the catalyst to make sure that team is clicking on all cylinders. And so the onus is on his shoulders. Matt Rule can name him the starter. Cool. I mean, I think we all know that that's the way it's trending, right? From the You saw his introductory press conference on Zoom. He, he was like, yeah, this is my team, basically. <laughs> like there was no, no doubt in his mind that he was QB1. So I think beyond that, okay, bet. Bring that same energy and make sure you are leading these men when you get out on the field. Uh, MJ, I sometimes get the honor of filling in for you on Total Access, but I, I've noticed that you've had some co-hosts recently. And uh, yeah. before I let you go, what do I have to do to, to get on the show with MJ Acosta Ruiz? Say less, Steve. I got you. I'm going into the studio in five minutes. I'm going to tell them right now, like, what are we doing? Where have the chips fallen? To be clear, though, when all of this was happening, you were in, like, London and Paris. And so, you know. I think you went to Paris right after me, though, right? Did you go to Paris before before me or after me? Before before you. Okay. Did you go to Lavenue? Did you take my restaurant advice? No, I didn't. The girls had a full itinerary, the aforementioned uh, friends group. So the itinerary was jam-packed. Were it was snails? Also. Did we eat snails? Yes, I struggle with Okay, We all right. did all the things. Yeah. Love <laughs> it. I love it. Uh, NFL Total Access, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern today. Two hours on NFL Network. Uh, I know you've got a fitting for the show. Our, our wardrobe department is next level yeah. at NFL Network. But I do really appreciate you taking some time to be my first guest on the Rich Eisen Yay. Show. MJ Acosta-Ruiz, thank you so much. Thanks, Steve. Let's do it again. Appreciate you.